That's it. We're here. This is it. Episode one. Me and episode you. Episode one. We're doing yeah. episode one of the awesome. Tabletop Punks podcast. Yeah, I guess this is episode one of the Tabletop Punks podcast. It is episode one gone, of the gone. Tabletops, Tabletops Punks, Tabletop Punks. This is a bad episode one. We're, we're going to try again. <laughs> All right. This is the Tabletop Punks podcast, episode one. Here we are. We did it, James. They said we, we couldn't. It. They said we couldn't. Nobody was telling us not to, but no, we no, did no. it anyways. Everybody was actually very supportive. But yeah. hey, if you're tuning into this podcast, that means we piqued your interest or you know something about us and you're like, oh, cool. Now they're doing another podcast, but it's just tabletop games and not just cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. But in case you don't know who the heck we are, um, first of all, we're on YouTube as well at John John the Wise, my YouTube channel. And I am John John the Wise, if you want to see our beautiful faces. But let's do a little bit of an intro here, James. Let's let people know who we are and uh let them decide if they should listen to us for another hour good idea uh john john who are you this is a question i ask myself every day <laughs> i am a tabletop fanatic friend of tabletops i love tabletop games i have a tabletop youtube channel that focuses on cyberpunk but i just made the switch and you know this episode this episode this podcast is kind of part of that switch is also just talking about whatever tabletop gaming thing I want. I love Warhammer. I like Cyberpunk. Those are my top two. I love video games. I've been on Helldivers too. We'll talk about that this podcast. And, um, you know, just all across the board, uh, ARPGs, RPGs, Skyrim, D&D, um, &D, love D&D, &D, all those things. Tabletop gaming, it's all a big part of everything that I love. I love the hobbying. I paint miniatures as well and uh, i just love getting into it if there's a good tabletop game especially you know if i go to somebody's house this is like the dream scenario james somebody invites mm -hmm. me to their house i've never met them before and it's like a boyfriend of a friend of my wife's friend or something like that and i walk into a room and i just see miniatures everywhere and board mm -hmm. games i'm like oh my god i made it hey this you want to see somebody's warhammer army when being I introduced to them at their home Dude, if I, they collected bolt, bolt action or if they did historical uh, models, I'd be like, dude, let's get a hist I want to be Napoleon. You can be whatever. You know, let's do it right here, right now. I don't mind. Awesome. Dude. So, yeah, that's me uh, in a really small nutshell. And um, I don't want to take up too much time. So, James, tell them who you are. Hello, everyone. I'm James Hutt. Uh, I'm a game designer. Uh, I work for Art Historian Games. I also work for James Hutt Games, and uh, on uh, some some of the games that I've worked on, uh, I was the systems designer on uh, Cyberpunk Red. That's the one you probably know me from. I also did some work on the Witcher tabletop role playing game. Um, had a great time doing that, and uh, I also have my own company, James Hutt Games, where I'm working on our first thing uh, called. Um, uh, what happened at Sugarworm Village? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, cool that's it's a horror game. Will we game. talk about that today? Will we we'll talk about it? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll yeah, have we time can. to talk about everything. Yeah, and uh, you know, working on other crazy stuff. Uh, project titled Beetle World right now in the future at James Hook Games. But um, here is a here's a place where we can talk about all the stuff. You know, uh, I'm very excited to talk about everything uh, and just talk tabletop with John John the Wise. Honestly, tabletop games, I mean, I did make video games. I made a game called Tiny Bubbles on a iOS, Android. It's a fantastic game, you should play it. Uh, very calming, nothing like my other games. It's a puzzle game. <laughs> uh, but I got the chance to work in tabletop and I just, I've been running with it for I think five years now. Um, anyway, uh, but I've been making games in some capacity for like a decade? at this point and uh it, it kind of is my whole life uh it's a hobby and uh you know passion and all that stuff so i'm uh i'm definitely down to talk about anything tabletop which is why i'm very excited that we've started an everything tabletop podcast there it is and it's called tabletop punks because right. we're, it's an homage to our previous podcast night city council James works for Artel Games. I'm the cyberpunk content creator. 
So we got together and we were uh, talking about a lot of free DLCs out there. So if you guys want to check out Night City Council, you're into yep. Cyberpunk. We also answered a lot of questions about the Cyberpunk RPG. A lot of, you know, awesome answers for, from the community. I think it was like 180 questions in total that we did. So, you know, that podcast ended for this to begin. Out of the ashes rose the phoenix of this podcast. Yeah. I, I hear you on that one. I'm not sure that this podcast killed the previous podcast. I'm pretty sure we just wanted to do another podcast. James, but, this, uh, is not gonna, this is not going to work if, you're not, if you don't agree with me, all right? You got to agree. <laughs> this can't be a contrarian thing, all right? You got to be like, yeah, yeah, Ash. I don't know. Sounds Phoenix. great. Sounds great, buddy. Yeah. Come on, man. This support. I'm looking for a new co-host. Um, but all jokes aside, uh, James and I, we had a conversation talking about, hey, you know, why don't we end that podcast? I feel like we've said enough mm -hmm. of, uh, of about Cyberpunk, and we have. We answered so many questions, and it's not like you can't get answers anyway. Our, at our Tell Story in Games on social media, you can get all yeah. the answers you want. Rob is out there doing the Lord's work. And um, we said, you know, we've said enough. Let's talk about other stuff. We love other games. James is making other games. He's writing other games. He's playing other games. I'm playing other games. I'm playing video games. I mean, and, hell, I, I even forgot to mention that at Artel, I'm writing a dinosaur game right now. It was yep. revealed. I, it's pretty uh, revealed at this point, you know, fossilized violence. So I, I'm i even working on non-cyberpunk uh, stuff at Tal. So Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we, uh, and caveat, if there's cool cyberpunk stuff, we'll talk about that too. Sure. You know sure, what I yeah. mean? Whatever. But, you know, if you guys are tuning in, that's that's the basic genesis of what this podcast is, what it's going to be. And we're that's what we're hoping for it. Also, we want to make sure that we join up with the community here. We get some engagement with you guys. Let us know your opinions. John, John the wise at gmail.com. Actually, you know what? I think we have an email just for this podcast. Tabletoppunks at gmail.com. That's awesome. I believe I'm glad that's that wasn't taken. I will uh let me double check here. It's worth You better go get that. it now if it isn't. <laughs> it's worth checking tabletoppunks at gmail.com, baby. It exists. Awesome. It exists. So yeah, tabletoppunks at gmail.com. If you guys want to send us any of your information, you want to say, Hey, here's my horror story. What do I do? I got a problem player, he's a power gamer. What do I do? Uh, I'm trying to homebrew uh, Beauty and the Beast into D and D. What do I do? <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds great. You know, so yeah, we'll help you out and answer some questions. Um, and if you sneak some cyberpunk ones in there, I will ignore them. Um, just kidding. But anyway, that's it. That's the gist of it. So James, uh, we don't have anything planned for this podcast other than it being an episode one. But let's give people a taste of what kind sure. of things we're into talk to me about your latest hobbying we'll talk about games in a little bit but what is the latest hobbying stuff painting hobbying together stuff? oh man um so i just got back my um my my uh the uh this kickstarter called frame of jigs uh it's supposed to like hang magic gathering cards on your wall and whatnot um so i've been Looking for an excuse to put some Magic the Gathering cards in the on my wall. Been waiting for it for like a year. That's what's most recent. But uh, so is it like art please. piece? It's like art yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah. Of, so is for, it a print a big print of the card or just the card itself? No, no, it's the card itself in a plastic housing that slots into a frame. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I sometimes collect signed cards, so. The artwork, nice I mean, there. is so beautiful. Like from the beginning of Magic the Gathering till now, the artwork mm -hmm. on so many of the cards are so good. It's true. It's true. There's been a very high standard for quality since the beginning on those. So it's fun to put them on the wall and kind of recontextualize them as like a piece of art. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, prior to that is a bigger ticket item. I was just at the uh, Gamma uh, for Game Manufacturers Trade Association. It's a big industry thing every year and uh so i saw a bunch of new stuff coming in tabletop um yeah it's a gaming convention for tabletop gaming but it's for people that are within the industry right it's yeah, not it's really for like retailers so retailers. it's basically like we're at a gen con all the people going around would be fans 
Um, here, they're still fans. It's just they're also selling at their own comic book store. Yeah. So it's uh, it's very like, what's hot this year? What's not hot this year? Um, I know we weren't going to talk about Cyberpunk, but uh, there was some, something really exciting that happened yep. at the show, Cyberpunk-wise. Edge Runner stuff, baby. Well, Edge we're showing Edge Runner stuff, but last year's sales figures came out uh, for uh, tabletop games in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And one is, of course, D&D, &D, and two is, of course, Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. but three may surprise you. Wow. wow. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, and uh, so the whole team at Tau was super, super excited. That's awesome, man. I'm yeah. so happy for you guys. But, uh, I, you know, I that's think, one of those uh, things. I think Jay Gray had a religious experience after <laughs> hearing about it. Dude, that's great. I mean, Top dude, three is, is great because I'm not sure we're ever getting to. Uh, <laughs> hey, look. It's, or one. It is, it's it's it is, all it good. Is. It's number one but in my is, heart. But it is number one in science fiction. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's good. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, come on, dude. It's uh, it's such an honor to be up there with all those other people, all those other games. You know, you make your game, you of don't course. know what's going to happen, and then and the community loves it. Oh. So it's... Yeah, yeah it's, it's insane. Um, yeah. So anyway, that was, that's a that's a fun thing there. Um, we got to show off Shadow Scar. Yep. Uh, Cody's new thing coming out. Awesome ninja game. It's rely. Uh, it revolves around stealth because if you want to do stealth in a tabletop role playing game, I'm of the opinion that the game you're playing has to be centered around it. Mm -hmm. um, because it's otherwise, also... you, get, you know, a warrior running in and full plate right behind you. Yeah, yeah. And, it's uh, it's a cool concept too. It's Cody Pondsmith, son of Mike Pondsmith, creator of Cyberpunk Red and Cyberpunk 2020, and all that. And uh, Cody had this idea for the longest time to make a game with Japanese mythology, Japanese mm -hmm. lore, but also like using like multiversal concepts, like multiverses yeah, yeah. And, and stuff like that. So it's a really cool, it kind of reminds me of uh, Avatar, but multiverse. Yeah, it's, uh, I can see why you'd, you'd uh, see that. For me, it's like, this is, if you like Naruto, mm. And you grew up liking Naruto. This is a way to. This is a game to scratch that itch. It's uh, the multiversal travel is cool mm -hmm. for me because it gives a lot of opportunities for a game master. Yeah. But uh, I'm really excited by the the moment to moment gameplay of stealth. Yeah, that's you interesting. Know. I haven't seen he's, the stealth he's been mechanic. like uh, this. We're gonna look at this part like it's a Tenchi level. That's cool. Um, that's cool. So I, I think it's gonna be really cool and simple. Uh, simple system. It's a D6 dice pool system. So it's going to be a game that's going to stretch down to brand new tabletop people. And uh, that's great because, yeah. you know, uh, with Cyberpunk, it's kind of, it can get a little intimidating. Honestly, though, there are people who you couldn't show D&D to that you also can't show Cyberpunk to that you could yep. totally show Shadow Scar to. Yep. And you, who knows, that might get them into D&D &D and Cyberpunk because they're like, you know what, let me give it another it's a, game. You know, you want to introduce your friends to the hobby that aren't part of the hobby. I want to play with all my friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, Honestly, so, I, I love brand new players in tabletop gaming. They are really good. They're the best, they really dude. Good. The best because they're ready for anything and they give you a perspective that you wouldn't see from veterans. Mm -hmm. Especially like uh, tabletop role playing, you know, you got somebody that has no idea what to do, doesn't even know about rolling dice, and they, you put them in a situation, they find an answer that you're like, oh my god, I never would have fucking thought of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's 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 why they're super important actually for play tests as well. Um, you gotta oh, yeah. have, it, they're really hard to get because it's getting somebody who's never played a tabletop game before to play test a tabletop game, extremely unique. But uh, I'm, I'm of the opinion that you need to at least do one play test with people who have never played a tabletop game before. Yeah, I mean, that's good great. luck finding them. But uh, but it's super important. You learn a ton. Uh, it's worth your time, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Anyway, uh, sorry, I'm play testing on the brain. I just I just hit a deadline on FV fossilized violence. Uh, Dinosaurs. Yeah. For a playtest, we're running, we're spinning up there. You're a working man, James. 
I am I am a working man. Uh, and while we're at playtest first look uh, ideas, while we're talking about those, um, could have mentioned this earlier in the video, but uh, jameshuntgames.com is the place to go to sign up for the newsletter. And uh, in the newsletter, there is a Discord. And in the Discord, uh, there is a... Uh, there were first peak stuff. Developer James updates. Games. Developer updates. Yeah. Uh, it is intentionally obfuscated with that many layers of BS to get through to it. Uh, because uh, the stuff in there is, you know, very uh, secret. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you, if you want to know the secret, then... You deserve and to then know. Because you have to follow. You, then you have to follow that path. Yeah, that I you just gotta. Laid out. You gotta ask the troll at the bridge. Do the. You riddles. have to go to the website, <laughs> and join the newsletter, wait for a newsletter to come out monthly, receive the invite to the Discord, and join um, to get first look stuff. Uh, we're gonna do a first look on Beetle World pretty soon. So. By the way, have you, ever, have you ever? Have you ever tangent? Have you ever? Um, Appreciate. Like, it. <laughs> Have you ever written like any of those things, like the two guys at the door, one tells the truth, one tells a lie, or the Monty Python, the three questions the, at the bridge, you know what I mean? Have you ever done something like that in any of your games? Not in any of my games, uh, but, and, and no, no shade, the shade free zone. Uh, at one point I was uh, early, early on in my career, I was like trying to get paid to do game design anywhere in any form. And uh, I took I took up this uh, contract to do an escape room in Seattle. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, I definitely did it, and they definitely didn't pay me. Um, oh. This is why no names. That's uh, but there was something like that in that, and what I learned from it is people only like that like, think about how long that is in a movie. That's yeah. the amount that you can handle that without going. I know. I don't want to do this puzzle anymore. <laughs> in the movie, it always gets solved. It's never, right. it's never four hours of them going, come on, what's it at the tip of my tongue? What's the thing? Uh, let's give it up. I think that puzzles are super, super dangerous things to put in a tabletop role playing game. Yeah. Unless it, there needs to be a, a way to solve that puzzle that does not involve your player's brain. Uh, but then you know what dude, I mean? I've done a puzzle and then they figure it out like quickly and they're like, Oh, it's just this. And I'm like, yeah, it's just that. Like, oh, uh, okay. I don't know, man. As long as you're not putting anything into, uh, and you know, if you, as long as you're not putting a runescape quest puzzle in, in anything, oh, I was supposed no. to use the chisel on the door. <laughs> How was uh, I supposed to know. know that? How was anyone supposed to know that? Maybe you have the rune light plugin. Maybe that's how you're supposed <laughs> uh, to know. Dude, cheats, hacks. Not there cheats. You go. The normal way everyone plays that game. That's right. So if you're listening, Jagex, you know who to ban. All right. Speaking, speaking Jagex wise. Oh gosh. I did pick up a copy of their tabletop role playing game for RuneScape. I have not read it yet. Oh. I really want to. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it gives just an idea of the percentile difference between armors so that I can then homebrew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I, I desperately want to see what the equivalent of rune armor is in fifth edition. Oh, so it's a 5e. Don't know. Don't okay, know. Okay, Expecting gotcha. not it not to be. Yeah, uh, I didn't know. But if it was I can original. always tell the percentile. I can build based on the percentile differences in this game and the percentile differences in that game and then go, this is what it is translated. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm guessing they put Elvarg stats in. And if they put Elvarg stats in, then I can say Elvarg is an adult green dragon. And then, mm. then I can figure out the formula. Yeah, that's good. There, there is a uh, A D and D module, or uh, ho I don't know what it is, of Diablo two that I've seen out there. Sounds really fun. It, it looks awesome. The artwork's sick, and it's A D and D second edition. It's second edition, whatever that is, and um, it's Diablo two, and they made like three different books for it, three different supplements. I've been. That's like one of my bucket list things to run that thing. 
I haven't nice. seen anybody play it or review it anywhere, so I'm not sure if it's any good or not. Um, but you know, it's Diablo 2, dude. Lord of Destruction. That's the right, tabletop yeah. role-playing game. So there's a um similar into the weird the weirdscape. Uh I used to make um for a while I had this zine called Visions of the Vault. I was uh making it with a guy named Eugene Fasano, uh, who's an awesome game designer. You should check out his stuff. Um, and, um, in that we discovered the weird and wacky world of things that are, you don't, you definitely don't have the license to do, but was done anyways for fifth mm -hmm. edition. Um, have I brought this up to you before? Have I told you this story before? No, no, but I've heard of those so, kinds of things happening. There is a, um, it's not Jalen showdown. It's, um, Jackie Chan adventures. Oh yeah. The so, cartoon? Yeah. Okay. All of the magic items in Jackie Chan Adventures were redone with fifth edition stats. No way, dude. So, so all of the like talismans and stuff. <laughs> That's um, hilarious. It's so funny. It's actually good. Um, the, yeah, we, we went through those to see like, are these people just memeing or do they actually have any design chops? And this guy was good. Yeah. I That's remember good. going like, oh man, this is our competition. That's so we gotta, cool, man. We gotta compete with we gotta compete with the guy willing to completely produce licensed stuff without any license to do anything. He's on the edge, baby. I know. <laughs> he's he's the real edge runner. He's a real, real edge runner. Edge runner. <laughs> he's a tech dude, media. That's crazy. Rocker boy. Triple so, by the way, you guys just saw got a taste of the podcast. We were supposed to do hobby stuff, and then we just went into whatever we wanted to, and that's what we're going to do. It's tabletop gaming. That's what we're talking about. All right, I'll tell you what I was hobbying. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. What, what, what have you been hobbying recently? So I'm starting a new Warhammer army. I know. Isn't four that's enough, fine. John? Isn't four enough? No, no, no it's okay. not. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but, yeah, tell that to my wife. Anyway... I, I I was like, can they put oh, these? She's stuck with you. It's technically half of it is her Warhammer army. Did you did you tell her that half of it was your war was your Warhammer oh, army? Oh my too? god, you're so right. I never it's did bar this angle. Nurgle. That's right. Yeah, bar. This is your like. If something happens to me, you're coming up. That's what it is. So um, I'm starting a Dark Angels army, and I literally told my friend, I'm like, can GW make these big boxes any smaller? Can it be a box that like fits in my hand? It's just sprues, all right. Right. You know, why does it have to be this whole spectacle, right? How am I going to sneak this into the house? Would you like the real answer? Yeah, I, I, cause they're selling. It's because, it's because they need to communicate a price point on the shelf. Yeah. But that's, sorry, that's the rain on your parade answer. No, I yeah, know. Gundam just does spruce too, and they have smaller SD models that fit like there, and it makes no sense why Games Workshop can't do that. Yeah. More it's, often. A, it's a $210 box. I paid $180 because oh. of a, discount that you get from an flgs at gw you got to pay that full price flgs you'll get a discount so you know i'm i'm happy they do that yeah it's it's so anyway i got the new deathwing box uh or deathwing assault i think that's what it's called they really it's all, call it deathwing that's the dark angels terminators are all called right, deathwing right. yeah, my, yeah my blizzard senses are tingling Motor, motorcycles are ravenwing all right so oh, wow. that's what they're called uh, and then they have Black Knights, Dark Knights, whatever. Anyway, uh, it's all Terminators, the whole box. And I'm like, I just read a book for Warhammer called The Lion, Son of the Forest. I've read it twice. And I love the direction that the lore went into. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll start collecting Dark Angels. I like that this direction that this lore is going to. I'm going to piggyback off of that lore, make a whole legion or chapter out of uh, that side of the story. So I basically... which book was this? Sorry, I I love the Warhammer audiobooks. Which sure. book is this? Oh, this is a good one. Is it? This is a ten out of ten book. This it's... is a ten out of ten. I'm here yeah. for it. It's I got current... a long drive to do. It's current lore too, so it's like it brings you kind of up to speed with what's going on nowadays, at least with the Dark Angels. And it's called The Lion, Son of the Forest, by Mike Brooks, and it's basically the lion. Waking up um, 10,000 years later, he was in this deep sleep. He's 10,000 years older. So this um, is post Horus Heresy? Yeah, way past. Okay, Horus that's Heresy. interesting. I've only ever gotten 
done the audiobooks for Horus Heresy, so go ahead, go ahead. Oh, the current lore stuff is really good too. I can give you some recommendations, but um, please do. Um, but yeah, it it's it takes place. He wakes up and he's like, "What's going on? Who am I?" He doesn't even know who he is. He has no memory. He has amnesia, and then it's him realizing who he is, realizing what's become of his legion, what's become of the Imperium, and the old lion his character was very much like um stuck up kind of wound up tight warrior mm -hmm. crazy a, a knight he was considered a noble man on the outside but a ferocious animal on the inside and he's considered like probably the best you know fighter of all the primarchs he, it's it's you know it's debatable you're, but you're gonna have to people trying to fight you in the comments i i get it you, look get in the comments don't at me the, the lion is the best of them all okay let's just yeah. get that straight the lion is the best it's the first legion put it in legion. the comments upvote the comment if you think that that he's not even is stronger he, than the lion listen he's <laughs> not even my favorite he's not even my favorite primark okay so uh but I just, I concede when I know if I, the fact is the fact. That's what he was designed to be. He was designed to be the guy. But he was not always reasonable. He was very secretive. And, and this is like a new version of him 10,000 years later. He's wiser. He's more understanding. He's more mm. reasonable. He's more regretful. He's more, uh, you know, like he shows way more emotion than he's ever had before. And even... That his sons are like, oh my god, I, I don't know who this guy is. I don't even recognize this guy. Like, this is not the guy that I used to know. So, I love that. I love the whole reasonable, changing, humble kind of aspect of it. So, it made me want to collect. That's and, cool. Um, yeah, you know, everybody collects for whatever reason. You know, some people, they play the meta. They want to have, like, the best models, the best units, have 10 of them, and just, like, throw them on the board and win every game. Some people just go for looks. Oh yeah, those look cool, and I'll just collect those. I'm kind of like, uh, not meta's like all the way on the bottom of the list. It's like lore, look, feel, like those are the kind of things that I care about when I start collecting an army. So yeah, I'm doing that. So hopefully I'll get that done sometime. It's just, dude, getting it to the standard that I like it to be is it's 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 time consuming, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I I will I will uh, I will have to ask you a very important question at this point which is since since we last spoke have you won a game of warhammer 40k i have okay <laughs> okay he did it he did it. he's back how dare back. you dude no. don't you he's ever back. you you're gonna call me out on the first episode of our podcast like that bro <laughs> i there yeah, was my... a lot of there was a long streak there dude, but, my we're win back, rate, but we're yeah. back and that's all that matters for those of you that are listening, my win rate is abysmal. So, you know, this might be some kind of motivation for you if your win rate is abysmal. I've never had, I've had one bad game out of dozens and hundreds or whatever. Uh, and I haven't won many. <laughs> uh, I even introduced my wife to the game and she beat me, dude. She beat me in our intro game. And yeah. she's like, what, nothing new here. She's like destroying, destroys me in, in combat zone too. So, uh, it's rough, dude. It's rough. I have a game tomorrow, so, like, wish me luck. Jesus Christ. Good luck. Good <laughs> Thanks, luck. Dude. Thanks. But, I yeah. The orc player doesn't roll sixes. Well, it's a good thing meta and winning games is all the way on the bottom of the list for me, or else I would, like, completely stop playing the game. I, I was about to say, there, there sounds like coping, but I know it's heartfelt. Oh, uh, dude, how dare you? <laughs> I would challenge you to a game, but you'll probably beat me because that's just how it goes. I don't know. I don't know. I, I've been recently getting into uh, getting back into, you know, going to game stores and playing competitive games a little bit here and there. Um, nice. What are you playing? Not into doing that with Magic anymore, but oh, yeah, uh, no. Magic I've been playing is... Flesh and Blood. Mm. It's good. It's a good game. Um, is that a skirmish game? So, no, it's a, it's a card game. Oh, uh, that's right. I a company that. from New Zealand. Uh, it has a lot of um, interesting ideas in it that make it unique from other card games. And it, it very much is a melee fight simulator. Mm. Uh, I'm liking it. Uh, and uh, it, it feels very, very um, like uh, more uh, like combative than other card games where you do stuff like Blue player draws a bunch of cards. Okay, you drew a bunch of cards. 
in this game, you feel like everything they're doing is punching you. So magic is a duel between mages, and right, this flesh is and blood a is a duel between you know, like fighters. even when they are mages, they're mages that are in a fighting game. Yeah, if that yeah. makes sense. It feels more akin to a fighting game than it feels like directly a magic gathering. Is the feel like it's a one-on-one -on -one fight between two people? It's not very like much in... so. Very okay, much so. It. That's cool. Uh, That's interesting. The other cool thing is uh, the every card is a uh, mana resource. You can discard things to um, to get mana off of them, and uh, because of that, uh, you don't get the land screw, mana screw stuff that can yeah. happen in Magic, which no. is when not you fun. When you discard... ask any Magic player. When you discard a card, does it go away for the whole game, or does it go back into your deck? It goes to the bottom of your deck. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, uh, when you turn it into mana. Yeah. Uh, every other time, it goes into a graveyard. Got it. Okay. That's fun. That's interesting. I'm, I never... I'm liking the, the quicker format, the Blitz format, um, mm -hmm. because it keeps the games under 30 minutes, tight, and... Uh, you feel like, you know, you're not playing. So there is a duration that I want to be at a Friday Night Magic style situation, and it is shorter than a Friday Night Magic is. Mm. That can be uh, good. Yeah. Uh, the games have inherent, like, grind prevention, kind of. Anyway, I'm liking it. It's fun. Yeah, that's interesting. I like that. So what did you do a tournament or something? Or uh I did stuff? a I did like a they call them armories. Hmm. I uh I was getting back into it. Um they I played at an armory in uh ugh, yeah, over in uh, over the brick, I think it is, and it's is uh, it like in the a, greater Seattle area. Is it like a draft kind of thing? It, it's not a draft. Uh you show up with a character and you get to play that character. Um uh, another cool thing is that everybody has like clothing they wear. Like it's not just I bring my deck; it's I get to dress up my warrior. Oh, cool! And then you show them, oh, I'm bringing this stuff, and then mm. it's kind of sweet. Oh, cool! So there's like cosplay it. aspect. It's not required, right? Obviously, the cosplay aspect. Oh no, 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 no! Encouraged. No. There are cards that are representative of the things that your character is wearing. Oh, and that's why it's called an armory. In addition to your deck. Got it. Interesting. So do they give you like special upgrades and stuff like that? Yes. And oh, you can so... block with them. So you can block with um oh, in addition to you everything can be mana. Everything has a block value when you block attacks with it. Yeah. And it is um it's a subtractive uh blocking with cards and then your armor that you're wearing, you can also block with. Yeah. Cool. So. Nice, man. That's very cool. Yeah, I'm uh, currently um, kind of not tired of match play. I mean, I have a match play game of Warhammer 40k tomorrow, but I've been wanting to really get down and nail a narrative way to play Warhammer. There, ah. is, there is a way to play it narratively. It's called Crusade Mode. I've tried it in, a previous, in the previous edition. I thought it was okay, but it was still too much bookkeeping. The game was really over bloated with rules as well. I mm. tried to introduce it to you and you're like, I can't dude. this is not, it is just, and I cut like half the rules out and you're still like, yeah. this is too much. And I, the game I is can't much better. do phases. Look, I've, I've heard that the one page, um, one page rules, there's one page rules Yeah, for, uh, I think the space Marine one page or something. No, it's just uh, for the whole game, every army. Their one-page rules is what it's called, and they have, like, multiple documents. It's free. It's mm. out there. And you can play as, like, you know, the Space Rangers or the the green guys, you know what I mean? Well, like, okay, I know it's not the same, but... Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm it's, letting you know that type of experience is the type of experience I'd more be, more likely to have. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people enjoy one-page rules. It's much faster. The game is so much faster. It's like two hours instead of four. Um, but, any, I mean, look, most of the, the thing about Warhammer is that it's so much. That's the right. problem. 
And the way you introduce people that I've realized, because I got my kind of got my wife a little bit into it, is you don't you don't explain rules, you explain concepts. Mm -hmm. So if there's a rule that says the gods give you lethal hits, you have to choose between sustained hits, lethal hits, or devastating wounds, and you have to roll on your leadership to see if you pass that, that's exactly, your face is exactly what happens. But if I tell you, you have to roll 2d6 under your leadership stat to beseech the dark gods for a blessing. That's mm. a concept and rule that you can understand. I get it. You know I what mean, I mean? I, it, there's the thing where, um, you know, Games Workshop has been doing this for a very long time. Yeah. They pioneered this stuff. Yeah. And they have a bunch of uh, systems bloat because of it. Yeah. Because, you know, Warhammer should be Warhammer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They have to be stewards to what people expect them to do. And unfortunately, this can lead to difficult stuff. That's why I'm super excited whenever they do something like uh, they did, were doing a strike based, like a smaller scale one. There's, I think there's their room for innovation scale. is there. They you have know? multiple, you know, formats and stuff like that. There's even Legions Imperialis that just came out. Mm -hmm. And it's basically epic 40k where you have like little tiny space marines on a, you know, like 10 little okay, guys. That's kind of cool. It's very cool. It's very cool. And it's like a giant army, but they're all like, you know, little dudes on a little uh, thing. Like and you 10, can, M 10 mm, right? Yeah, 10 millimeter. And you can like straight up just paint them on the sprue. That's how small they are. Mm. You know what I mean? That's so cool. it's cool. Yeah. I mean, definitely, I don't need to, you know, get into another hobby. So <laughs> that's the only no, 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 no. Fair enough. But if like you had two armies and I was at your house and you're like, hey, you could play this army, I'll play the other. I'm like, we're doing it right now. Like, let's do it. I tell you, if you, if you come up to Seattle, I just got a bunch of, um, <laughs> Uh, what is it? Uh, Dark Age Mech Warrior <laughs> Hero yeah. Clips things. If I come to Seattle, I gotta be there. I saw there was week. a shitload. There was a shitload of them in the half price books, and I was like, how much for all of it? Uh, I'll take them all, sir. All of I'll them. I'll take them all, sir. <laughs> and yeah, now I have a giant fucking bucket of mechs, and yeah. I look, I that was pure joy opening yeah. those up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Apparently it was a bunch of tournament prices. Ooh. That somebody was holding on to, so Jesus. But no, it is my mech bucket now. Oh, no, That's I your like mech it. bucket. <laughs> I love that. Every once in a while I can open the mech bucket and look at a mech. Yeah. That makes me happy. The way God intended. I, I am a big fan of mechs. Yeah. By yeah. the way, you're basically playing a Warhammer thing. It's called Helldivers. Yeah, dude. Oh, Helldivers is good. Wait, let's talk about the Crusade, and then we're going to talk about Helldivers. Okay, okay. I don't want yeah. you to get you off track. No, no, no. You're good. Um, so, yeah, there's a narrative way to play the game. It's called Crusade Mode. It's basically matched play, but more bookkeeping. And it's more akin to games like Necromunda. Combat Zone is a lot like it. Any game where you have your guys... It's a long form campaign and in between games you upgrade your army and your dudes that gain XP and and stuff like that. And you're supposed to be able to tell a story. So mm -hmm. I'm like, this my rule is if you're gonna homebrew or create your own narrative style, the best thing to do is to play it rules as written first, come as much as you can, as clear and as straight as you can, and then you can make the adjustments that you need. But I ran into the problem that I ran into when I played Starfinder. And the problem is, and I'm sure it would happen with Pathfinder too, is there's too many rules. So yeah. there's no room for homebrew. They have an answer for everything. And if, if you make a homebrew, it's going to break 10 other things. Right. Because there's, there's so many things. They're all interlinked. They're all connected. They might not even seem connected. It's like... I raised one resource that you get throughout the campaign. I'm like, oh, let me just double gaining this resource because it seems like it's a fun thing and I want everyone to have fun and I don't want to, you know, draw out this campaign. And bef and then as I was reading the book, I realized like, oh my God, that's it's going to be totally broken with this thing, this other rule that I just read right. right now. So there was a reason why it was low is because of this rule right here. You know what I mean? So 
I I did homebrew. I added like one, like two things that are so minor, and that's all I could do. I wanted to have a thing where you could like capture each other's warlords, and then like you can have another match where you go and try to rescue the warlord. Cool idea, right? But yeah. it's it totally messes things up because it's like okay, but then that decreases points from my roster, and then if he's kidnapped from you, then can I use him in another game? At the same time, what does that mean? Am, am I handicapped? And it's like so many things go wrong with it. So I'm playing your rules as written. We're having fun. It is an interesting way to play. And um, the cool thing is, is the story does kind of tell itself. Uh, the way the way it is, is like the Games Workshop kind of holds your hand and says, play it the way we want you to play. And if you read between the lines, the story's there. You know, does it leave room for you to create your own story? Very little. Very little. I mean, you still have to, like, weave things around. Like, why are we allies? But that's basically it. Like, why are we allies? Okay, that's about as much homebrew as you're going right. to be doing. It's 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 session-to-session session continuity-esque. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I don't know if there's a solution, to be honest with you. With a game like Warhammer, it's very much uh, focused on the competitive side of the game. They spend a lot of resources focusing on that. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the player base plays only that competitive matched play style. Yeah, it's... Um, I mean, that's what they want. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's what they want. If Things you look at YouTube be numbers... What people that's want what they them want. to be, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's what the gaming company wants too. They like it. that, that you They know, like it when people like their products because they buy them. Exactly. It's, it's very clear. I think the answer here might be to look farther uh, than the edges of the Warhammer galaxy. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and honestly, as a tabletop role-playing game guy, that just makes me think, Maybe you just want to play a tabletop role-playing game that has squad-based movement, and you know what I mean? That A, a tabletop role-playing game that borrows from those, uh, um, those places you like, right? Yeah. But I think there's room for that. I don't know why I haven't... I'm sure it exists, but I haven't been privy to it. I wonder, I haven't played Twilight 2000. I wonder if this game is like it, but is there... I have there, no idea. I is. have no idea either. I just know it's like grid-based and like, you know, you're going through an army, a battlefield with other players and it's tabletop role-playing game, stuff like that. I would... But I, I don't know, is it Band of Brothers, the tabletop RPG though? Because that's kind of what I want. I mean, fair. Uh, that might be what it is. I don't know, man. Um, but I think maybe something exists out there. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's definitely not mainstream, but I was hoping that I could maybe homebrew something similar with Warhammer. I guess my idea is I wanted like the books and the way that things are handled in the books to be the way that we handle things in our games, mm. where we go to a yeah. planet. There's a reason for us to be at that planet. There's something that we need from there we have a battle to figure out whether we can take that thing or not. And then, you know, uh, Angron comes with the steel chair from the top ropes out of nowhere, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think there, isn't there a Warhammer tabletop game? There must there, be a Warhammer tabletop. There is. I played one. Uh, oof. What was it called? Bl Wrath and Wrath and glory. Very interesting. Really well done. A lot of rules, dude. A lot of, a lot, just so many rules That's where the fans are. It's, but this one was too much. It wasn't similar to the game as much uh, as a tabletop game, the war game. It was more in another direction. And to be honest with you, we were playing it on a virtual tabletop, and the virtual tabletop does, like, most of the work for you. Like, you click a button. Oh, and, and even then it was too much. And even then, like, I didn't understand concepts. Oh, the man. game master just had to say, click on that thing. You know what I mean? Every time it would be like, okay, what do I click? Uh, just click on, all right, go to your character sheet. You see where it says, uh, ch check investigation. Uh, there, there's a there box. Is a, there is a sickness in that house. Yeah, I know. I, me and you were kind of in the same boat. You more than me of the simplification thing. You love like as simple as possible. That way we can understand the game and play it. I, I, I okay. Yes, compared to other people, 
yes, I'm more in that direction. But I'm actually a pretty crunchy guy uh, in the simplified games world. I'm on the crunchy edge. Well, your you know? crunch, from what I've seen, is from the theory crafting of taking all the pieces, putting it together, and making, like, you know, a cake. Modularity just gives you that for free. When you build modular, you get that for free. Almost no work goes into that other than, you know, a generalized, let's make sure there's not a big one thing Yeah, yeah. that people are just going to do and not have fun because then they won't see the rest of the fun. Uh, there's a certain kind of player that needs to be protected from their own impulses in that arena. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Nobody wins a tabletop role-playing game, yep. uh, but some people really, really want to. Yeah. No, I know. That's weird. That's so weird that people want to win a tabletop role-playing game. But I don't know. The thing is, plenty of people also want to play a tabletop role-playing game where they feel powerful, and that's cool. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, why don't we talk about that power game? But it, power it, sometimes it looks the same. Sometimes it looks the same, but mm -hmm. in the head of the person, it's different. That's why it's, um, I don't know, though, like I have to deal with this power gamer at my table. I hear that That's, all the time, it's, dude. It's too adversarial, you know? Yeah. How about yeah. how about you have to work with this power gamer at your table? How about, mm -hmm. oh, I want to tell an awesome story, and this guy wants to tell it from the perspective of this character who happens to be very powerful. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a specific line, I think, throughout this show of it's not that it's it's a people activity about people talking and having fun and making stories together. I don't know. I, I agree. agree. No, no, I agree. I used to be of the camp that the power gamer ruins the game and the power gamer sucks. Don't even have them at your table. And look, if you don't want to have a power gamer at your table, that's your own choice. You know, hopefully you handled it in a civil matter in a civil way. Um, cause you, if you don't want to have someone at your table, you don't have to, you can, you know, work that out, but small I think, claims court perhaps. Yeah. Small claims, small claims. you know, <laughs> whatever <laughs> arbitration, whatever you gotta do. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, what was I going to say? Small sign you contract know, was... for joining the game. Jesus. That'd be good. Oh, okay. How about a little more compassion? You know what I mean? A little bit more understanding, put yourself in their shoes. There's something about the way that they love power. Everybody plays their own way. You know, power gamers love to play mm -hmm. it that way. And there, I think it's lazy to think that you just punish the power player or, or you make their life hell for the choices that they have for playing the game. Instead, you just have a conversation with them. You know, you have a conversation with what their goals are with this character. I ideally, you had that conversation in session zero. Yeah. Having one-on-one yeah. -on -one conversations with people that you don't know very well can, you know, can throw up confrontational bells and all that stuff. I, I hear that a lot, but a lot of times it's a, oh, we didn't have a session zero and oh, now I'm seeing problems from not having that session zero. Yeah. The session but, zero isn't just make your characters. It's also the game master saying, hey, so this is the type of world we're in and here are the type of things that people think about. And you know what I mean? Giving them a general idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's, some people think session zero is just, oh, let me tell you the rules and introduce you to the system and then we'll make a character. And it's like, yeah, that's a part of it. But the other part is to understand, will this, will, will we all gel? Will this work? Will we, will we be able to cooperate in the way we tell this story? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, um, it's hard because you get to a session zero and people either want to go like, oh, I'm going to make my character right now. But you have to talk about us before you talk about you in that situation. Because you know, you, it's it's a session zero. It's we can we'll we'll talk about this. In, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk. Future. It's it's a perennial problem, isn't it? Um, yeah. By the way, if any and, of you have anything, any comments about what we're saying or any point of view, please feel free to throw them in the comments or even email me about it. Tabletoppunks at gmail .com. More than happy to read your email on the next episode, and we can sure. dive into it deeper. Um, 
but yeah also the other thing that so so i'm i'm doing a narrative warhammer thing i'm we're having fun i'm enjoying it i'm gonna give it the good old college try we're gonna get through the entire campaign um i have eight people playing so wow which it's good yeah it's eight people we're all friends it's invite only and um and we're all actually having fun so there maybe there's something to it maybe letting games workshop hold my hand through the whole thing and not being able to be as creative as i want to be maybe there's maybe i'm looking at it the wrong way it's not a tabletop rpg it's it's not tabletop rpg-esque it's mm -hmm. warhammer the tabletop war game with more fluff that's that's how it feels you know what i mean I know, I know that mode has a lot of history because I've read Old White Dwarf where it's in there and stuff like that. And um, hey, man, hey, I hope you yeah. have fun. Yeah, the game used to be like that. Like when the game started, first, second, third edition. You know, that's they focused on tell a story, make it cool. Who cares about points? You know, just get get armies on the table, tell a cool story, but. It evolved naturally into being a more competitive game. It it's a great competitive game. It takes too long to play a game, but uh, it's literally the whole day to do a tournament. It's literally the whole day, like nine a.m. Yeah, yeah. to nine p.m. So, so that's the only bummer about that. But playing with your buddies, strategizing tactics, balancing the rules, all the different rules. So like, there's variety of uh, no one has like solved the game. Okay, it's not solvable. Because there's yeah. so much going on. Um, but one of the other things that I didn't like about the tabletop RPGs is it's hard to understand where the role playing comes in a world where war is the main thing that's going on in it. You know what I mean? War is very, it's, it's front lines fighting. You know what I mean? It's just, where's the role play? Where's the S, you know? other esoteric things that are going on cyberpunk dnd you know you're in so many places you're on a mountaintop you're in a tavern you're in an underground dungeon like there's so many things going on but i don't know uh where i can find a niche with or or, or spot to, to have yeah. some role playing you know neat so this is literally something i'm working on in beetle world right now <laughs> because in beetle world uh, you're a member of the military, and there is a world-spanning conflict going on in between this slime adversary that is a hive mind, but it isn't particularly um, interested in anything other than eating. Uh, and uh, you've been in this war for a hundred years, and it's a very you're in a very patriotic, monocultured world empire. Um, so I have all these these things where if you're going into a town, um, the people there are super excited to help you and are kind of throwing over, you know, uh, throwing themselves upon themselves to uh, uh, to assist. You know, like oh, I cooked you this meal, and that meal is something that's actually relevant to you and in gameplay. Mm. Uh, is there anything I can do to help you? You know, do you need accommodations, a place to stay? Uh, here are all these problems that we have that you could ostensibly help us solve. Mm. Uh, you know, we'll throw a party in your honor. You know, thank you for coming this to this place. And then bad things happen at the party that are no, unexpected. Nothing bad <laughs> happens at the party. Hey, come on. Very, very clearly, nothing bad happens at the party most of the time. <laughs> the, the key here is um, if you're in a world where everyone... Um, it's kind of the opposite of a lot of 40k where every, where everyone there is super, uh, happy to see you and glad you're serving for them. Mm. Uh, you might feel like I have to be the people that they think I am. Oh, got it. Got it. You know what I mean? I'm trying to have the opposite of the 40k, uh, war story thing where, you know, the people that aren't space marines look at the space marines like they're oh my god i don't want to be anywhere near that guy oh yeah they're monsters. he might fart in my general direction and yeah. i would die yeah um they're monsters yeah. right they're monsters mm -hmm. uh where it's a it's a great war where uh the you're in a voluntary military 
that has 90% of the population volunteer to the point where they're like, no, it's okay. We understand you want to be part of the military. Uh, would, would you like to make some weapons instead? Uh, you know, would you like yeah. to produce food for them? Yeah. Uh, the most popular media in, in Beetle World, on Beetle World, uh, are these one um, tablet, clay tablet comic books. <laughs> the whole comic book on one clay tablet. Yeah. And they're all about war heroes and stuff. Oh, that's cool. So the only, so like the most popular thing is to make impressions of them and then mass produce them and then collect your clay tablets and go, oh, this is the equivalent of Captain America and it's our number one bestseller all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Propaganda is just normal. Yeah. Dude, that's cool. Speaking of propaganda, might as well talk about Hell Divers now. Oh yes. Have yes. you played by the way? To play I haven't gotten to play it. I heard it was kind of hard to get into some servers and stuff and No, not I anymore. Figured... They fixed it. Not you anymore. Can... No, yeah, oh, good. you're good. Yeah. Is it on crazy what's the cross play situation on it? PlayStation or PC, that's it. It's not on anything else. Unfortunately. And is there cross play between PlayStation and PC? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, yeah. oh don't absolutely me. Absolutely, baby. <laughs> Thank gosh. Yeah, no, this is from an indie company. I played Helldivers 1, and uh, they had no idea this game was going to blow up. Like, they had yeah, yeah, yeah. peak players on Helldivers 1 was like 10,000 players, okay? And now they have like 500, 600,000 people trying to get into That's their beautiful. servers. Yeah, it's great. It's a really awesome, and it's growing too. But um, basically, the game is Starship Troopers, the video game um it's third person perspective you and three of your other homies you land on a planet you fight through bugs to get objectives done killing bugs is not the main thing of the game it's actually um getting your objectives done while you're on the planet there's missions you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's an um, extraction shooter right exactly you drop down well. you have a certain amount of respawns and everything kills you easily you die all the time and um you drop with like you unlock weapons machine guns bazookas mortars sentries and there's even the coolest part of the game is you get to call out airstrikes like bomb mm -hmm. strikes and orbital barrages yeah and i'm stuff. i have a i'm a big fan of earth defense force oh dude there's yeah. a new earth defense force coming out and i'm figuring if i have enough time for hell divers in between now and earth the newer defense force coming out in english yeah, yeah. no well hell divers it, it's anyone can get into it it's that easy to get into like there's some people that are obviously better than others uh you know because they're sweaty gamers but it like casual it's a casual gamers heaven you know what oh, i mean good. love that yeah it's good and but the entire game is based on the starship troopers war propaganda thing uh, which, by the way, I had no idea that... I thought it was just like a dumb action movie mm -hmm. that was fun and dumb. But I didn't realize that there was like a whole philosophical thing. Behind oh, no, no, no. It. Starship Troopers is very, very... Um, Dude. Very deep. It's I got hip deep. to it later on in life, but I'm like, oh my god, this is literally a war... It's a war propaganda film yeah. satire. I'm this hoping is... to serve some similar flavors in Beetle World. Oh, uh, I do. I, before we get too far away from it, the other thing, uh, the other secret to making it feel like a Warhammer story, making it feel like a military story, um, is having you interact officially with other parts of the military. Mm -hmm. Having a general, someone who's higher ranking than you, having um, in on Beetle World, you're part of the two special forces, Elytra. Mm. You're either part of the like home defense one or you're part of the um, special missions one. Got it. And uh, in your capacity, you can essentially be the FBI, do the FBI local police force thing, where the FBI shows up at a local um, police and go and start calling shots and whatnot. Yeah. And so, but if anybody's, you know, part of the management uh, above that, the greater strategic management, uh, they go, actually, we have a thing in the area and you have to listen to them. So that whole like uh, existing within a military hierarchy is the other way to have the get the feel of the Warhammer books. I think yeah. in a perspective 
warhammery book feeling tabletop game. Yeah. You definitely don't want to be the only space Marines, right? Like, or it's just me and my buddies are space Marines. The game. Yeah. Hold on one second. There's a crazy noise outside. Give me one second. Good luck, John, John. Oh, it's the sprinklers. And he was never seen again. He was never seen again. I was just to check the sprinklers. <laughs> That's how he got me. Uh, but yeah, Helldivers, um, it really plays on that fact. Like you work, you, you live on super earth and being a hell diver is the greatest honor killing bugs is the greatest honor mm -hmm. and spreading managed democracy around the, the oh, galaxy managed you gotta, democracy. You gotta manage the democracy yeah yeah you it can't, can't be all the way democracy you know, unmanaged, i mean oh, that's boy. Oh, that's boy. never gonna work you gotta manage it you gotta make sure people are voting for the right guy you know when they vote i i like so. that it's the existence of the smartphone made every other phone dumb yeah yeah, it's you know so what good. I mean? The existence yeah. of managed democracy implies that unmanaged democracy is a bad thing. Oh, it's treason. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah. so um, and then there's even missions in the game where it'll say, like, terminate an illegal broadcast. And when you get to there, you're supposed to destroy, like, a radio tower. And on the TV screens, it says, like, Super Earth is a lie. The bugs have feelings. The bugs mm. are trying to communicate with us. And it's like, oh, get rid of that thing. <laughs> And there's another enemy in the game called uh, automatons, and it's basically yes. terminators. It's like terminators, and um, you one of the planets that you have to liberate is called Cyberstan, and it's like, oh, liberate this from the automaton Cyber, threat. Cyberstan. It's it's Cyberstan. one of their planets. It's their home planet, basically, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, liberate it. Liberate from their home. Planet. Their home planet. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's even been like um, times where the enemies don't attack you maybe it's a bug but there's times where like the enemy tries to communicate with the player like break the oh that's like, cool and try to tell you like hey we just want peace like you're the one attacking us kind of thing so it's you know sounds like ops the line sounds like treason to me but anyway <laughs> the reason i bring it up and not only is it a really fun game but it gave me an idea to do a really cool a uh, one shot using the cyberpunk red system I think oh, yeah? it would be perfect. It would be perfect for it. The the combat and everything. You could homebrew some weapons. And uh, it, the weapons already exist in the game. You just got to make it work for Cyberpunk. And, um, and it's perfect for a one-shot because it's all contained. Like, you drop on a planet. You have clear missions, just like the video game. And getting to them and doing the things is what's interesting. And I wanted to throw in, like, the bureaucracy of working for the super earth and having to deal with the red tape, you'll see like other commandos on the same planet and they'll say like, Oh, this is outside of your jurisdiction. You might see them doing something they're not supposed to be doing. What do you do as a hell diver? Do you, you know, help them out because it's the right thing to do or do you persecute them because you know, that's treason what they're trying to do. Right yeah. There. I would. Um, so yeah, definitely. I would, um, what would I do there? Um, I would say locational, like the. Is there an armoring mechanic where there are parts of the things that are armored and it's weak spot hunting? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's why called shots are a thing. You can kill mm -hmm. things. There are some enemies. One shot, they're dead. They're the little ones with yeah, anything. Yeah. Pistol doesn't I matter would, what you hit them. I with. would maintain that in your in your your play, and then exactly, I would exactly. lower the called shot DVs mm -hmm. across the board. I might um, I might increase the damage of all weapons a D six in addition, and I might have any armor ablation just remove all armor. Okay, I like that. I like, that. and uh, that might make it more arcade shooting. Mm -hmm experience and closer to the video game that you're specifically trying to be part you know what i mean yeah, yeah. versus like the realism uh, aspects of cyberpunk red i think that would be really cool man that sounds dope I, that's what i'm thinking too and then like some enemies one shot you're dead or two would, shots you're dead i would also just keep all weapon skills as one weapon skill yeah yeah including same. heavy weapons everything you just have everything yeah, it's your weapons, your weapons and melee maybe because you there's a melee attack, you know. Yeah. Um, but one of the really cool aspects, like I said, the callouts, the way you do it mechanically in the game, you you hold the control button, 
Mm -hmm. and then it'll show you, okay, you want to do an airstrike? So while you're holding control, it's down, down, right, up. So you're like S on the you know I've WSD. Seen that. Is that does that is that flow well? Is it cool? Yeah, you know what's cool about it is like you, there's bugs chasing you, and you're like, oh my god, to uh, down, call down, down, right down, call down a respawn to bring one of my homies back. They're chasing me, so I gotta run, find a safe spot. Do, 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 do. Oh, I, I messed up. Sorry, dude. I'll run again. Oh my god, they're on me. Help me, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. If you like this, you would really like Earth Defense Force. Dude, it's I'm telling you, it's, it's Have you that... seen Earth Defense Force? I isn't it the one with the the flying ship up and down? Isn't that the Super Nintendo one? No. Oh, you're thinking uh, I'm thinking the old old one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh Earth Defense Force is a uh is a game where it's arcade style shooting. Uh and it's third person perspective. And the cool part about it isn't the isn't the fact that it's graphically oh. interesting. Yeah, this is not what I thought it was. Yeah, it's that uh, instead of using the power of the machine to make better graphics, they used it to put more ants on the field. Oh, bro, it already looks like hell divers. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You would really like the customization available to you in that game. Uh, there's a whole class that just calls down airstrikes the whole time, dude. You would like it. You would like it a lot. Um, there's crazy. a new one coming out, but the previous one is really good uh, as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would play it on newer hardware, and it makes everything load faster. It's great. Okay. Yeah, no, it's cool. It looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's basically, the, I'm it's, looking at it's, it. It's, this is what it is. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. co-op, four-player Earth Defense Force. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to try to get, it, get into Helldivers. I think it'll be fun. Well, I might have to buy it for you right now as a gift, as a friend oh, to you. So oh, I may, shit. and if I do, do you have well, it on? You did, did you play it on Steam? I could not play it on Steam. This uh, laptop so then, cannot handle its power, but I do have a PS5. You have a PS5? Okay, hey, that's yeah. you're more than enough. Um, so anyway, okay. with that whole up, up, down, left, right mechanic, I've been pondering on it. I'm if you like, put in the okay, I need to know if you put in the Konami code. I haven't what tried happened? it. I haven't tried it. You haven't tried it? I haven't tried okay. it. Okay, okay. You're Fair right. Enough. I gotta try it. It's dude. probably an Easter egg. I don't I'll think you would ever do that mechanic without a Konami code Easter egg. I'm gonna put it on the Reddit. I'm gonna say, has anybody tried to put the Konami code? No, don't do that on the Reddit. They <laughs> already have that post hundreds of times. I'll They'll search. I'll They'll search first. You. I'll use the search function. Um, so yeah. Knowing I'm... how to use the search function on the Reddit makes you stronger than many men. Yeah, exactly <laughs> you know what i mean so how like, about you, this you, you're a modern day philosopher if you can use the search function on the reddit how about this how about homebrew with me ponder with me okay I'm it's calm, your turn ponder. it's your turn in combat and instead of shooting your gun you're like you know what it would be great if we call in an airstrike all right great. so i was thinking maybe you have a stat called like your command stat i might introduce it or maybe i'll use your intelligence stat uh with it for, for aiming the airstrike no what you do is you press up up down left right if you do all the codes correctly you have a grenade in your hand and that grenade wherever you throw it it drops a red light that goes up into space and then that's where depending where that is that's where the airstrike will so to f so for me the fidelity of the experience being close to the thing that you're homebrewing is important yeah. So I would have that be a grenade that calls that beacon. Um, if you miss that grenade, it still went off. Yeah. It's at a different thing. Yeah. Then I would have uh, at the top of initiative queue, it come in. Mm -hmm. uh, because of, you know. But um, my question, that... I, I agree completely 100% with everything you're saying. I, that, I, I'm with you on that. The question is, how do we simulate the the anxiety of trying to get the codes in correctly before the you know you get killed or and it's like it doesn't feel like you wasted your turn mm. you know what i mean i was thinking like a dice pool take your instat let's say your instat is a seven you roll 76 five up five ups are are you know each airstrike needs like you know four successes or five successes or you you are very warhammer pilled right now. I'm I'm try that's what I'm that's why I'm here. I'm asking you, game designer guy. Okay, Jimmy, you, you want, made you, you made cyberpunk. Opinion? Yeah, what oh, are we God. doing? What are we doing? How are we making these? They're called stratagems, by the way. 
how are we making the stratagems feel like they're going off Ugh. on your turn? All right. We use these. Yeah. These are called X dice. Uh, I was messing around with them. Uh, sort of invented them for a thing called... Um, I can't remember. Something hate... Hate... Needless... Counting, etc. Mm. Something. I don't remember. Um, but they've got one X on one side. And they've got nothing on the other ones. So if something's going to go wrong, to represent the amount of stress you're feeling, right? It's a D6, just, right? D6. It's a D6, but only on one side is it marked. The importance yeah. here is you're not reading stuff. It's a drama thing. So here we go. On only on one six is an X. Um, they're easy to make. You just... A blank die. You should be able to get blank D6 pretty easy. Yep. Um, I sort of dremeled the next and then uh, went in with a paint sharpie to make these nice ones. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so if they're in, under some sort of stress and you're the GM, you can determine they're under any number from one through six stress. And then you add one of these, depending on the number you determine them to be under. And if you get next, something changes, something goes wrong, but it's GM adjudicated. Hmm. Well, you know, maybe the... I move the place where you went there. Maybe you don't get it off. Yeah. Maybe, you know, you uh, take some damage. Mm. So, you know, it clips a rock or something. So like the the way it's in the it is in the video game is if you get the input done quickly, then you will be able to call in the airstrike quick enough and save your buddy, save yourself. If you take too long, these bugs aren't waiting for you to finish your 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 process. They're they're coming at you. You know what I mean. Yeah. So how do I how do I simulate that on your turn in Cyberpunk Red? That's what I'm thinking. So I think that would be a um, the bugs later in the initiative queue uh, can roll to go up the initiative queue, and if they pass you while you do that, your turn pauses and they get their turn right now. Ah, okay. So let's say you're like, I'm going to do a stratagem. I'm going to do an airstrike. I go, okay, I'm going to roll initiative for all the bugs. We're in combat, right? It's your turn. You're already in combat. And you're only, I would only, um, I would first, I would do these X dice. Yeah. And then if they roll an X, I would maybe roll a D6 uh, for each of the bugs underneath you in the initiative queue. And then they would move up the initiative queue, the number they roll. And if they cross path, your path, they cross in front of you, they get their turn immediately. Gotcha. In the and middle then, of you booping in your stratagem. So they'll get their little turn. My dog's fine. He's been doing that since I've known him. Uh, mm -hmm. he, you'll... Um, I couldn't see it. it. No, he made see some crazy coughing noises. He always oh. like like a hairball, basically. He's been doing it Sorry, since dog. he was one years old. <laughs> so... Um, so yeah, so let's say we find out two of the bugs pass you, the two get their turn. If you're still alive, then your your stratagem will go off at the yeah. top of the next initiative. And they don't need to attack you. They could attack your friends too. They just do whatever they want. They get they their do turn. Whatever. They get their turn. Got it, got it, got it. So that's With the, the idea downside. Is it has a double benefit in that they maintain that new initiative. And at the top of the next round, any that survived the airstrike, if any survived the airstrike, or whatever, they now go kind of again. It feels yeah. like they got a new turn, but mechanically they didn't. Got it. I, um, okay, I really want you to play the game so you can f have a feel for yourself and you'll come back to me with a oh, oh, cool idea. For sure. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like where I you're going from this. this. I think the stress, there's like a stress thing of like, if you're if there's no bugs, you could take your time, no big deal. You'll You'll never get it wrong. But if there's bugs, like, you know, within however many meters or squares from you, it increases the difficulty of getting it done. Yeah. Also, if you're further on the initiative queue and the bugs have already moved and you're essentially already at the bottom, then you have that time, quote unquote, to boop in the, the thing. That's and why that your initiative of... is so low, because you went somewhere, you, you took the time to, like, you know, go mm -hmm. somewhere else. You got it, it kind of... It, 
I, I think the homebrew would kind of um, mirror that. Yeah. Anyway, I remembered what I invented these uh, as a part of, and it was a game called Glance. Mm -hmm. uh, gamers loathe absolutely uh, needless counting, etc. Yeah. <laughs> I believe is the, the technical title. It's an RPG in your pocket. I don't know if you can Google it and find it, but... Oh, uh, maybe. It's, I'll, it's free, I'll put right? It out, I'll put it out on the... On the, I'll do another drop on the newsletter. Another reason you need to join the newsletter at jameshuckgames.com is that mm -hmm. sometimes I just drop tiny little things that I make and you get them for free. There it is. Okay. Hey, we did it, dude. We did episode one. If you episode guys, one. If you guys uh, loved what we talked about and the things we talked about, I mean, this is what it is. We talk about whatever we want, uh, the, the games that we like, and um it's in the tabletop lens and that's what we did today and i just want to say that's james awesome. i'm looking forward to the future with you as my Me partner too. i appreciate that john john i, I, I appreciate you james i appreciate you too also i hope you know anyone listening to this put it on the background clean their house yeah you know just yeah. cleaned up their space yeah let that. us let us know how much you cleaned up the house and all of that stuff. And how much better you feel because of it. Exactly. You know you're going to feel better. It's self-help. Yeah. All right, buddy. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for Absolutely. supporting. And thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.